In this video, we're going to discuss now the third law of thermodynamics. The third law of thermodynamics states that the entropy of a pure, perfect crystalline substance at zero Kelvin is zero. Zero Kelvin, remember, is absolute zero. When a system should possess zero kinetic energy because temperature is proportional to kinetic energy. And if that's zero, then kinetic energy should be zero. Now in this state, there should only be one microstate in the system. There should only be W equals one, which is unique. Now, if we can define a zero point for entropy by stating this assumption or this law that at zero Kelvin, we will have zero entropy, then from that zero point, it means we can actually calculate absolute entropy for pure substances. And that means that we can start working on this experimentally and that we can vary temperature and measure entropy and then create a list of standard molar entropy values, much like was done for enthalpy. So we're gonna represent this um, as the entropy symbol S with the degree symbol and then the temperature um, as a subscript. And standard entropy is going to be at 298 Kelvin, so room temperature, and one bar of pressure, uh, which we're usually used to being in an atmosphere. One bar is very close to one atmosphere, but it's just, it's just not quite. It's 0.9869 atmospheres instead, just so you can be calibrated to what one bar of pressure means. And, and bar is typically the units of pressure that we use when we talk about weather, talk about it in, in um, millibar for the pressure of a weather system. So this idea of um, standard entropies leads us to an equation um, similar to what we did with enthalpy, which is that we can actually calculate this change in standard entropy um, by taking the sum of our products um, times the stoichiometric amount that you have and subtracting the reactants. So we'll have our, our entropies for our products that we'll look up our standard entropies um, and subtract the sum of our standard entropy of our reactants, taking into account the stoichiometric amounts, which is really these coefficients in front of our reactants and our products. And so, remember we'll have products minus reactants. So we'll take the coefficient of our product and multiply it by that standard entropy that we will look up in a table. And then we're gonna add it to our other products coefficient times the standard entropy that we look up for that material in a, a table and then subtract that sum of the reactants entropies. So let's, let's look at some standard entropies before we, we look at this much further. So here's a table, there's a lot more. Your book should have one that looks a little bit different. Um, but these are different substances and entropies, and they're standard. They're at 298 Kelvin. And note that the units are joules per mole times Kelvin. So these are molar standard entropies for one mole of a substance. Um, and let, let's compare some. Um, let's compare water at different, different phases for these standard entropies that have been found. Um, so let's take, here's water as a gas um, and water as a liquid. Um, and we can compare their actual entropies, which are um, 69 for our liquid water and 188 for our uh, water in the gas phase. And that is more than twice, or that's like three times as much entropy in the gas phase than the liquid phase. And that makes sense because in the gas phase, our particles have more freedom of motion and so they can occupy many more arrangements in space 
and therefore more microstates. And so they have um, a greater entropy when uh, the gas for gas particles relative to liquid water particles. Uh, let's do another comparison. Let's compare something with different molar masses, but that are similar. Um, so let's look at a, a molar mass of bromine versus iodine gas. Um, so if we find that we've got iodine gas here and our bromine, liquid bromine gas right here. When we compare these two, our iodine entropy is larger. Our, our iodine is also a larger atom. It has more mass. It has a, whoops, a larger molar mass than our bromine gas. And so we see that the larger an atom is, the actual larger amount of entropy that it has um, compared to something smaller than it. And this really has to just do with the energy states of a larger uh, or heavier um, molecule um, being more closely spaced together. And so we'll see more dispersal of energy through those closer spaced states, microstates. And let's compare um, another set of entropies. Let's do it for allotropes, which are going to be, um, let's look at solid carbon in two, two different flavors. A solid carbon. Um, so let's look at carbon diamond and carbon that is graphite and compare the entropies here. Um, and so in these cases, these are both solids of carbon, but they have different structures. That's what we call an allotrope. And our graphite has a larger entropy than our diamond. And we see a, a larger entropy for the um the the material or the arrangement of the solid particles that has less constraint and so our, our diamond particles are kind of these stacked tetrahedral um structures that um form a network whereas our graphite is really just sheets of carbon molecules instead and so we actually have a lot more movement um or, or less more freedom, I guess would be the right way to say it, within the graphite compared to the diamond. And so we see a larger entropy here. Let's do another comparison. This time let's try to do, change my color. Um, let's compare uh, a more complex molecule to a smaller molecule. So let's find nitrogen oxide. So we've got NO as a gas right here. Um, and I'd like to compare it to argon, which I actually do not think is on this chart. So let's add it. Argon gas, so a noble gas with just one atom. It has a, a molar mass, by the way, of 39.98, and it's going to have an entropy of 154.8 joules per mole Kelvin. And so when we compare these two, we can see that the NO has a larger entropy. And this is something that is a diatomic molecule rather than a monoatomic gas. And so we have in our nitrogen oxygen uh, molecule the ability to stretch um, and to vibrate um, in more possible arrangements. Well, so with greater um, microstates than something that's just one atom. Something that's monoatomic will not be able to have the stretch of a bond contribute to its potential um, arrangements or states or microstates. And so it has just more freedom of movement. And so we see a higher, um, a higher entropy for NO. Now, the, the one thing this chart doesn't have also that I'd like to compare is solids versus dissolved solids. So let's take a look at, uh, I'll add some values here, um, potassium perchlorate, perchlorate, perchlorus, uh, ClO3 <laughs> um, in the solid state. 
is going to have an entropy of 143.1 joules per mole Kelvin, while um, if we have the exact same salt, but in the aqueous state, it's going to have an entropy of 265.7 joules per mole Kelvin. And so that is a pretty significant increase um, from the solid state to the aqueous state. And that's because our, our particles, again, if we think about this just from the state of like how much movement there is, in the solid, these particles are not moving relative to one another at all. And the second they're dissolved, there is motion within the liquid state, the aqueous solution, that allows a lot more possible microstates when it's dissolved in water. And there's a lot more freedom of motion, and so a greater distribution of our particles and its energy throughout that system. So now that we've kind of looked at some of the differences between the entropies that are listed in our standard entropies, um, let's just do a, a sample problem um, looking at the calculation of the uh, change in entropy for a reaction, which is the, the combustion of ammonium. And I've pulled out from the table the standard entropies for pure substances here on the right. Um, so if you'd like, take a pause here, stop the video and try this out, and I'll start the solution here in just one. All right, so let's pull out our equation again. Remember, this change in entropy for the reaction is going to be equal to the sum of my products, entropy, minus the sum of my reactants, entropy. So this is going to be, I'm also going to take into account my coefficients as well through this process. So I'm going to have four for my coefficient for NO times the standard entropy of NO plus six times the standard entropy of water. And these are all in the gas phase. And I would be very careful to choose the entropy for water in the gas phase rather than liquid or solid. Once I have that sum, I'm going to then subtract from it the sum of my reactants entropies. So looking at NH3, it has a coefficient of four. So four times the standard entropy of the ammonium uh, plus five, the coefficient in front of oxygen, times the standard entropy of oxygen in the gas state. So that's going to be equal to four times, um, and that entropy for NO is right here, 210.8, and that's joules per mole Kelvin, plus six times my water, which is 188.8 joules per mole Kelvin. Um, and that'll be summed together and subtract four times that entropy of ammonium, which is 192.8 joules per mole Kelvin, plus um, the six coefficient for water times, oops, times the entropy of water, which is 100 and, oh, sorry, oxygen, which is 205.2 joules per mole. Kelvin. So that's going to give me something um, that if I plug this all into my calculator, it should give me something like 178.8 joules per mole Kelvin. I'm sorry, joules per Kelvin. These are going to be in terms of moles. These are our mole coefficients. So we're correcting for moles. So we're going to be able to report our units as just joules per Kelvin in this case. And, and we look at this number and, and great, it's about 178, but really what's important about it is it's positive. Um, and so that means that uh, we have something that increases in entropy for this reaction, um, for this system. And that should make sense because we are going from a system with nine moles of gas to one that has 10 moles of gas if I'm just adding up my coefficients here.
And so I would expect that to represent a greater dispersal of my particles within a, a, a reaction system. 